Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be going over problem one from week eight of the Summit Invariance Maths competition. Um, this is the last week, but I'll still leave a link in the description below with details to the competition. Anyway, this is the problem I'm going to be solving today. Uh, we want to know for which natural numbers m does the inequality, the absolute value of sine mx minus sine my is less than or equal to m times the absolute value of sine x minus y. And we want to know uh, for which values of m does this inequality hold for all real x and y. Okay, so if you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, and I'm going to get into a solution. Okay, so the answer to this problem is all even m. So if m is an even natural number, then this inequality holds for all real values of x and y. However, if m is odd and a natural number, then this inequality does not hold for all real x and y. I.e., if m is odd and a natural number, then there exists some x, y for which this inequality does not hold. Okay, so to prove that, firstly what I'm going to do is exclude all odd positive integers. Um, so all that needs is for me to find one counterexample uh, when m is odd to this inequality. And then what I'll do is prove that this inequality holds for even m, i.e., for any real x and y, and if provided m is even, this inequality holds. Okay, so let me start with the odd integers. And uh, of course, there are many different counterexamples you can use, uh, but this is the one I'm going to do. So let x equal some alpha plus pi, and then we're going to have y is just equal to alpha. And the reason for this is because on the right hand side, we sort of want to, to find a counterexample, it'd be ideal if we could get this thing here zero because we know that this side is non-negative, so all we need to do is ensure that this thing is positive, and we've found a counterexample. And of course, if I have x equals alpha plus pi, and y equals alpha, then x minus y is just pi, and we know that sine of pi is zero. Okay, so if we put these two things in here, the right-hand side vanishes, and now let's just look at the left-hand side. So we've got sine of mx minus sine of my, and of course the absolute value of that. Now remember, we're, shoot, we're free to choose um, any alpha we want um, for this. So we're going to choose alpha sensibly. Okay, but now let's just expand this using what x and y are. So that's sine of um, m plus, sorry, m times alpha plus pi minus sine of m alpha. Okay, now let's just use our double angle formula on this thing here. This is going to be equal to sine of m alpha times sine of m pi, but we know, oh sorry, times cosine of m pi. Okay, and then minus, or sorry, plus sine of m pi times cosine of m alpha, but we know that m is an integer, and thus sine of m pi is zero, so that's just going to be plus zero. Okay, and then of course we've still got the minus sine of m alpha. Okay, now cos, uh, cosine of m pi is just minus one to the m, Okay, and because m is odd, um, then minus 1 to the m is just minus 1. So we've got minus 1 times sine of alpha, minus sine of alpha, which is of course just the absolute value of minus 2 times sine of m alpha. And of course we can just write that as sine of 2, sorry, 2 sine of m alpha. Now all we need to do, remember we're allowed to choose alpha to be what we want. Uh, we just need to ensure that this input here is not zero, so we just need to choose alpha such that m alpha is not a multiple of pi, um, and we can, there are lots of different choices for that, but if we choose alpha equals 1, this actually works for all m, so if we just have alpha equals 1, then we have 2 times the absolute value of sine of m. Now because uh, this thing is only zero when uh, the input is a multiple of pi, uh, because m is an integer, this is always going to be non-zero. Okay, um, so yeah, so this thing here is positive, and thus, and because we know that the right-hand side is zero, this is a counterexample for the case where m is odd. Now let's look at the case where m is even, and I'll prove that this inequality holds for all x and y real. Okay, so I've written a little claim up on the whiteboard here. Let me prove this claim first, and then I'll get on to looking at the case where m is even. So I claim that the absolute value of sine... <coughs> Excuse me. I claim that the absolute value of sine n theta is less than or equal to n times sine theta, where n is any natural number and theta is a real number. Okay, so let me prove this, and I'm just going to do it by induction. In the case n equals 1, on the left-hand side I've just got sine of theta, or the absolute value of sine of theta, and the right-hand side I've just got 1 times the absolute value of sine of theta, 
So it's, it's an equality, so that holds quite nicely. So that's the base case done. Now let's look at the inductive step. So suppose it holds for some n. Now let's look at n plus 1. So on the left-hand side, I've got sine of n plus 1 theta. Like so. Um, and now what we're going to do is just use our double angle formula on this. So this is sine of n theta times cos cosine of theta plus cosine of n theta times sine of theta. Okay, now using the triangle inequality, we can just write this as less than or equal to sine of n theta, cosine of theta, plus cosine of n theta, times sine of theta. Okay, now we know that cosine of theta, oh, I guess one thing I should do is I can write this as sort of the magnitude of sine of n theta times the magnitude of cosine of theta. Okay, so let me just rub that out and write that again. So, the magnitude of sine of n theta times the magnitude of cosine of theta. And let me do the same thing here. This is cosine of n theta times sine of theta. Okay, now we know that cosine is, well, the arguments of the cosines are always real, and thus the magnitude of cosine is always less than or equal to 1. So I can write this thing here as less than or equal to sine of n theta. And then this thing here is less than sine of theta. So what I've just done is use the fact that this thing here is less than or equal to 1, and this thing here is less than or equal to 1. Okay, now by the uh, assumption step, we know that this thing here is less than or equal to n sine theta. And then, of course, we've still got the plus sine theta there. And then just combining those together, we get that that is n plus 1 times the magnitude of sine theta. Okay, and that proves uh, my claim by induction, um, just using the inductive step going from there. To there. Okay, now let me use this claim to prove that for m even, uh, this inequality holds for all real x and y. Okay, so we're at the last stage of the problem, and I want to show that this inequality holds for even m. Now I've written uh, this thing here on the board, 2 times cosine of a plus b over 2 times sine of a minus b over 2 equals sine a minus sine b. Now this thing holds for all real a and b, and it's not too difficult to prove. You just use a double angle formula on this side here. You expand everything out, there'll be some nice cancellations. You'll have some sine squared plus cosine squared and stuff like that. And you'll end up with the right-hand side. I'm not going to prove that in this video, um, but it's not too difficult to prove. Now what I'm going to do is use this uh, to answer the problem. And you can see the right-hand side here, sine A minus sine B, looks similar to what we have on the left-hand side. Okay, so let's plug in A equals MX and B equals MY, where M is some uh, even natural number. Okay, so we get sine of MX minus sine of my, so our left hand side, um, and that's going to equal 2 times the uh, magnitude of cosine of mx plus my, Ooh. all over 2, so just plug in a equals mx and b equals my, times sine of mx minus my over 2. Okay, now, uh, again, for the same reason, we know that cosine is less than or equal to 1. So I can write this thing here as less than or equal to 2 times sine of mx minus my over 2. And now uh, I can use the thing that I just proved, the little claim, that this thing here is going to be less than or equal to, or perhaps I should, firstly I should write it like this, 2 times sine of uh, m over 2 x minus y. Okay, now I can use the thing that I just proved, that um, sine of n theta is less than or equal to n times sine theta, where well, you're looking at the magnitudes of both sides. So this thing here is less than or equal to 2 times m over 2. And I guess one key thing to note is that m is even, so m over 2 is a natural number, so we can use the previous argument. So 2 times m over 2 times sine of x minus y. Okay, but of course here the 2's cancel nicely. And we're just left with the right-hand side of this thing here, just like we want. Okay, so that proves for the case m equals even, and that solves the problem. Okay, so this inequality holds for all real x, y, uh, if and only if m is an even natural number, provided, of course, m is a natural number. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, solution video. Uh, if you are new here, please do consider subscribing. I make lots of fun maths videos, proofs, problem solving, that sort of thing. So uh, if, that in if that excites you, uh, please do consider subscribing. I will catch you in the next one. Have a great day.